Well, people do it all the time. So how hard can it be? Let's find out. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Wolfie's Wheels. In today's uh, Wolfie's Wheels, we're off in the 2021 Auto Sleepers Kingham uh, for a few days uh, and I'm going on my own. Now, the film is really about how easy is it to be a solo traveller in a motorhome. Um, a lot of people do it all the time, so it can't be that difficult. But in all the years I've been motorhoming or even caravanning, I've never actually been on my own. Um, I've driven the motorhome and the previous motorhomes quite a few miles uh, unaccompanied, but I've never actually been on site. Uh, on my own so it'll be quite interesting to see things like well what are the little jobs that Anne always does that I don't actually know she does and things like that so uh, that's what the film's about um, and we'll see how we get on I'm not going to bother filming the journey down uh, and I'll see you in, in a bit well we're successfully on site now um, we're at the Caravan and Motorhome Club site in Broadway in Worcestershire um, and I've already found one very minor I suppose a bit of a first world problem of camping on your own um, and that is uh, kind of by my choice I've chosen to pitch quite a long way away from the um, reception area and what they ask you to do here is uh, to find your pitch and then go back to reception to tell them which pitch you're on so they can allocate it to you which is great because it gives you the choice however normally what would happen because uh, Anne would be with me is either she would go up and do that job while I made a cup of tea or the other way around. So I've been here a whole five minutes and I haven't got a cup of tea yet. I mean, what is going on? Um, anyway, there's a couple of little jobs we need to do before we uh, can actually get the tea on. And the first thing I always check is whether or not you're level. Um, and we've got this handy little app here tells us that we are not perfect um, in terms of level but to be honest that is not far out and I'm not going to bother putting it onto ramps um, because it really isn't worth it for that level of uh, of being out so what we need to do now is uh, plug the electric in um, and I think probably everybody knows how to do that so there's no point in filming that but just to reiterate just as a safety tip always play with the dead cable so in other words when you're plugging into the the main bollard, mains at bollard, plug the van end in first, then the bollard, and when you're unhooking, unhook the bollard end first and then the van, because that way, whenever you're playing with the cable, there is no current running through it and you're absolutely no risk of, of being shocked. Anyway, I'm going to go and do that and I'm going to make a cup of tea. So while we're waiting for the tea to mash, uh, there is another little job which one of us always has to do when you go on site and that is to tune the TV in. Um, now, with this particular model, the aerial itself is like a, a boosting thing which lives in this cupboard, just up here, so you switch that on there. And then it's just a matter of, with the TV, um, pushing some buttons, so put the power on it, and it comes up like that. And then you push this other button here, ADT it's called, ET, and with any luck it will start to, um, it says no signal, that's not a good start is it? Well I've no idea why it said no signal, um, I've just switched it all off, switched it all on again and it's now doing its thing, so as you can see it's just starting to find all the channels and then I'll have a bit of TV. Of course the other interesting thing when you arrive on site is the first opening of all of the various cupboards, so we haven't opened the fridge yet, so let's just see what that uh, what happens when we do that. Then there you go, everything falls out. Never mind, um, as I say, these things happen. And um, just while we're talking of things escaping from cupboards, another top tip is before you open these cupboards here, is to always raise this glass thing here because um, in here you keep pots and pans and uh, not pots and pans crockery and things and if they fall out you can smash your top uh, and in this one we don't keep tins but some people do um, but we do keep tins apparently I'd forgotten that coffee and 
more coffee. But we always put the soft things at the front. But as I say, it just stops them all falling out onto the uh, onto this hob top and, and breaking this piece of glass. At the beginning of the film, I did say I wasn't going to bother showing any of the journey, but uh, on the way down, I got um, significantly held up at Donington Services. Um, in a motorhome, you generally have to pull into the truck area, and that's where you're instructed to park at, at Donington Services. Um, however, there was a bit of a problem with the fuel there today. They only had one HGV pump working, and that meant that basically there was gridlock in the car park because that some people were queuing for fuel and they were bunging up the only exit route from the um, car park, which you can see sort of in the film, the, the result. I mean, I was sat there for 50 minutes, um, which really, uh, they should have sorted it out sooner. Uh, but ultimately they did get their act together and actually stopped more people coming into the car park, which meant we could then go basically out of the only entry route into the uh, parking. But, you know, what a nightmare, absolutely. But anyway, um, we arrived and as you can see from the film, uh, which is running at the moment, um, it's a very nice little site. I say little, it's actually quite a big site, this one at Broadway. Uh, looking forward to walking into town tonight for see what I can get for me tea. Um, Again, it's one of those things, isn't it? When it? If there's two of you, it's probably more worthwhile cooking uh, than, than when you're on your own. But I'm just enjoying my cup of tea in my camping and caravanning with Greyhounds and Sighthounds mug, um, which is a great to, site to join if you've got um, Sighthounds or Greyhounds, which of course we have, but they're not with us. Well, first night, first night's over, um, went very well slight mini issue this morning or just some a learning point really of solo traveling um is to do with emptying the waste because i've got to drive over a drain and i'm more used to having and tell me where to stop so i can let the uh, waste water out so it's taken a couple of goes to line it up a handy tip is if you just align the back wheel roughly with the um grid it will be in the right place. We're still en route to our final destination, which uh, this weekend is uh, the Goodwood, Goodwood Motor Racing Circuit for the members meeting 2022. After I left the campsite at Broadway, I called into a place called Willersley, which is where the auto sleeper make their vans. Uh, because the van was due its annual habitation service. So while I was in the area, I called into the factory and had it done at the factory, which was fine. It's a lovely little place, it's uh, Willersley, but unfortunately you don't get, uh, you're not able to go around the factory for a look, which is a shame because I'd have enjoyed that. Um, and they never actually do organize tours. Anyway, um, this is about solo camping and en route to Goodwood, uh, and I currently just stopped for a cup of tea. Um, did discover a major problem for me traveling alone uh, and that's what you do when the road you want to go on according to the sat nav and the road that you know uh, will take you where you want to go is actually closed so no diversions are signposted it just came up on the matrix um, a34 closed after the a303 junction just as i was approaching the a303 junction so i managed to turn off to the left um, and I had to fight my way on roads, which I had no idea where we went, to be honest with you, because all the sat nav was telling me was to turn around when possible. Uh, but I just sort of thought that, well, I think Winchester is the rough direction I need to be heading in, so I'll, I'll just keep going. Uh, eventually, it did make me rejoin the A34, but it was the other side of the accident. Um, so all was well. But of course, had I got a, somebody with me, they could have looked at the map and told me exactly where to go and played around with the sat nav. So I was just putting up with sat nag saying, turn around when you can, turn around when possible and all the rest of it. Uh, not really being very helpful to me at all. Well, we've made it to Goodwood. Uh, as you can see from the film uh, you're probably watching 
of the entrance into the car park, public car parking, e, uh, it is somewhat different to uh, a caravan and camping club or caravan and motorhome club site. Um, there is electric here. As you can see from the app, I mean, I do have ramps with me, but to be honest, at that sort of angle of dangle, it really isn't worth uh, the kerfuffle of trying to put it on ramps. Um, so overall, a success um, so far. Okay, uh, it's now Monday morning, so I've been away since Thursday. So I've had Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, camping in the auto sleeper Kingham uh, on my own. Um, to be honest, uh, when I started making this film, I expected to, to find lots of uh, things that I struggled with doing, camping on my own, um, but it's been absolutely straightforward, uh, if I'm perfectly honest with you. If you can live at home quite comfortably on your own, you know how to cook, you know how to wash yourself, you know how to make your bed, and so on, all basic life skills, you just won't have a problem in one of these. Um, it's absolutely straightforward. I guess the hardest part has been literally the driving, um, insofar as if you get rerouted, not always easy to uh, try and follow uh, your nose. Uh, you know, it's much easier if someone else is there on the map. Uh, but of course, it's no different to driving a car on your own, uh, which plenty of us do all the time. Um, but there just has been kind of no issues, as a, a little delay, uh, because you have to sometimes uh, book in which prevents you putting the kettle on so you get like a 10 minute delay and getting your cup of tea no biggie and it's just a matter of knowing where bits of the van line up for things like draining out the fluids um, but no problem at all in one of these i mean slightly interesting um, is i think how easy it is to camp as a solo camper does depend on the vehicle you've got so for example next to me is a type 2 pop top um, with a couple of people in it uh, and to sort of make the accommodation more suitable for them uh, they've had to put one of the driveway awnings on and I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you were on your own you would really struggle to put a driveway awning up or a freestanding awning even maybe but you know I, th I think that would be much more difficult but certainly the, the Kingham itself uh, lends itself in its standard form very much to solo or camping for two people so on that note, um, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just going to interrupt the important message and wrap up at the end of that film uh, with some additional information which might or might not be useful and actually just to answer a couple of notes and queries from previous films maybe. Um, first of all, the interesting thing is uh, previous films I've complained about the whale heater and it failing all the time and it not working and rather hoped uh, back in November when they replaced the heater that it was now good again um, but I'm pleased to report that the previous break we had we went away for a week in Lincoln uh, four days actually rather than a week uh, and it behaved well there not a problem and on the time I've been away now so that's Thursday night Friday night Saturday night Sunday night um, the heating and hot water have worked perfectly and in fact the hot water is very impressive it keeps it hot for a good 12 hours once you, once you've got it up to temperature switch it off 12 hours later it's still hot and that's great. Um, the other thing that, that I've been critical of in the past is the size of the tanks of water and waste. So let's just have a look to see how much a solo user has used on the trip. It set off from here with an empty um, uh, waste tank and a full water tank, so 69 litres of 
fresh water on board. And let's uh, just put this on and see how much. Yeah, so four days, there's a lot of reflection on that, see if I can get any better. Four days away, I've got 25% left on the fresh and it's 50% waste. Now what that actually means is that there is less than 50%, but more than 25% in the fresh water. And the fresh water means more than 25%, but less than 50%. It, you have to sort of get used to what it means. But overall, uh, I don't think that's, uh, that's bad at all. The other thing we'll just do is look at a couple of stats uh, about the performance of the vehicle over the time. So it's been going as a four day trip. So how far did we go? What MPG did we get and how long were we driving? So let's have a quick look at those. Right, so as you can see from there, uh, we've got average fuel consumption of 36.1 to the gallon, which is pretty good. Um, and the average speed was 41 miles an hour. And we spent 14 hours driving. 14 hours driving, no wonder I'm tired. And the overall trip distance we went was 579 miles. So 14 odd hours driving, 579 miles. Um, what did I think of it for the driving, those distances? Well, actually, it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's very comfortable, um, quiet, and, you know, no complaints. Anyway, back to the wrap -up. So on that note, um, I'm going to wrap this up. I've got a 300 plus mile journey to, uh, to get home. Uh, so I'll wrap it up here. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. I'm sorry it wasn't quite as uh, informative perhaps as I, as I thought because I kind of did think I'd find loads of stuff that was going to be problematic, but it's just been so blooming straightforward. It's, it's almost, uh, you know, yeah. My advice would be, if you're thinking about going solo motorhoming, just do it, jumping with both feet. Um, not a problem at all. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode of A Wolf's Wheels. Bye.